Okay, we are live. Hello right, and morning. welcome back. I hope you guys are having a great evening. I mean, it's about, goodness, 7 p.m. on Arizona yeah. time, Mountain Standard Time. What time is it over there right now? Right? It's uh, 10, around 10 in the morning. In Hong Kong, right? Yes, in Hong Kong. So, uh, man, uh, this is true. I, you know, <laughs> this, yeah, this is truly international thing here. So, so you know, let's talk about. So, I was thinking about it the other. The reason why I like to reach out to you and talk to you mm -hmm. because of what it takes to come up with competition, the brewer. Okay. So. So this is the competition brewer. If if someone doesn't know what Ilika Lefty is, so he won 2022 U.S. 2021 Brewers Cup and 22 actually 21 and 22. Yeah, yeah back the to U.S. Back. Brewers Cup champion. Okay, so mm -hmm. he is pretty much the best in U.S. And then this year he won what second or second place? Or uh, third? Yeah, he was second place uh, just after world. Sherry. Yeah, in the world. Okay. So he won the second place in the World Brewers Cup champion, championship. Yep. By the way, I did enter 2023 Brewers Cup prelim. Yeah, okay. yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And then, and then so, so because I was playing with it, uh, I was looking for really fast brewer. Okay. And I've been doing research on it. And I saw Ilika play with this one the last year event. I thought, wow, this is a pretty incredible. Yeah. So tell me about, okay, how much are you involved with coming up with this competition brewer? Uh, my involvement actually probably started, uh, okay, well, uh, maybe let's go back a little bit in okay. time. Um, the first time I uh, actually saw or heard of uh, MK uh, Magdalena uh -huh. uh, was way back in 2016. Wow. Uh, that's when uh, Michaela Walgren uh, competed for okay. Coffee Collective, and she was using uh, a custom-made cup. And I just, when I saw it, I just, you know, it just looks so cool. You know, the, you know how the MK shape with the yes, yep. it, it's not this one, but they always have that angle <coughs> shape. Um, this is uh, their latest uh, coming out. I think you have one too. This is their yes. sensory. Yep, yep, the sensory cup. So these are the newest ones. I think they just came out last night at their web shop. But okay. yeah, I, I fell in love with their cups and I've been collecting and buying since then. Um, so our friendship grew and uh, there's times that I've suggested certain things to them. Uh, maybe, you know, how how thick the cups should be. Yeah. Uh, maybe patterns, uh, things like that. So from the cups they wanted to make a dripper that was about almost two years ago. Wow, two years. Yeah, so, so the dripper development was quite a while. Um, this is actually the f one of the first prototypes that came okay. out. I'll just go a little bit closer so you can yep. see. Um, this is a five-hole version. Yep. We made a three, a four, and a five. But you can see it's quite different from what you have. I know. So this, this one is, is, yep. Yeah, this is a lot more pronounced. Yep. Um, and the bottom is the most important because it this doesn't have what you have. Okay. Okay. I, I'll say it. It's the nipples. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, without those nipples, this thing was dripping um, very um, messy. Okay. So that's the first one. And then, um, okay. So let's go back again. Uh, sorry about that. We were developing this uh, back in, I'm not sure when, but uh, 2020, last year, December, is when this came out. So about a year before that was when it started. You know, drawings, 3D renderings. Yep. Um, and I think they were doing some 3D uh, printing of the molds as well. Uh, so by the way, Ivan, what is your background then? My background uh, in coffee? Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, as your professional, are you background is like engineering or? No, no, no. I, I actually, I, we, we were, we had a production facility in Hong Kong. So ah, okay. I, yeah, I, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I have a background in production, um, okay. high tech production. We, we used to make optical discs. Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. So sure. my love for mechanical stuff and uh, sure. you know things created is still there. Um, 
yeah. So we 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 de started developing this, and uh, we wanted to uh, create a dripper that was easy to use. Um, actually, MK and uh, you know they they did most of the work already. They they wanted a flat yep. dripper, uh, and I just came in, you know, with a few suggestions. Uh, the whole. Uh, Elika's suggestion was actually one of my suggestions earlier, but of course he carries more weight. <laughs> yep. And so, so uh, being, by the way, so the people are watching this right now, they are really curious. I mean, what is competition brew? You know, and the, the dripper, right? And so why I mean why people come up with design like this for competition? What's the main reason behind that? I think the main reason is um, when you're competing, um, I mean, you've competed before. Um, oh, yeah. I'm a home brewer, but I watch a lot of competitions. I know a lot of baristas mm -hmm. that compete. Um, in fact, I've helped a few of them um, okay. with MK Cups. Um, I think the most important is consistency. Yes. You know, when you're doing three or four brews yep. in front of the judges, you need to be as as consistent as possible. You can't sure. be doing too many movements. You can't be, you know, I mean, the simpler, the better. And I think yep. Lika nailed that uh, by having a mellow drip lift much, much easier than, you know, agitating and agit, you know, then one cup varies from the other. With the mellow drip, uh, it actually eliminates that. Uh, exactly. I mean, this wasn't Correct. developed with, with mellow drip in mind, but it works. You know, the mellow drip is, a, is an amazing tool as well. Uh, but the MK dripper was made specifically as a fast dripper and a flatbed. That's right. So yeah. it, it was going against the, the the norm, you know, like everybody wanted flatbed, but you know how flatbed, the, the, the cup quality was kind of flat. Flat, exactly. You're right, yeah, the flat. It, yeah. There, there's no layering. It's, yeah. it's very flat, not, not much intensity. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you only get sweetness and, and pretty much that's it. Um, so uh, with with Elika, you know, suggesting the bigger holes, that was really, yep. really uh, what brought this to the next level. I mean, that's um, why. So when I doing my Brewers Cup prelim, I was using tricklet. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. I was using tricklet with flat bottom paper because I want the fast uh, flow rate. Yeah, yeah. Because at the time, I did not have access to this. That's right. You know? And then because I was watching uh, Ellen from Indonesia, she was in the Indonesia Brewers Cup prelim there and actually championship. And she was uh, actually, she was using, uh, act, no, it you, you, you wasn't Ellen, it was a uh, Johnny, I think. And he was using the, a flat bottom paper mm -hmm. and then tricklet. And then he put uh, kind of like similar to mellow drip lift type right on the top. Oh, it's probably a Gabby or, or a Harry. Yeah, that's a Gabby. That's where you go. Yep, Gabby. Yep. Yeah, and those that's are actually wow. very good. Yes. I mean, so that's, I'm thinking, wow, that's really interesting. Okay. And so, I mean, so people are watching this because the big thing is with the competition, the brewing, and for my experience was time because I have a total of six minutes mm. to complete my routine. Uh -huh. So... I mean, if you are making, I was making two cups. It wasn't too bad, but if you are in the three cup set, uh, setting, if you have a limited time, obviously you want the fast brew to bring out the most in that yes. cup. Yes. So in reality is, I bet you there's a lot better brewing systems out there if you have a lot of time to do, you know, spend, devote your time to, but especially competition, I mean, you have to look at the, all the, man, I mean, it is tough. It is tough yeah, to come it up is with tough. I mean, you have to, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't even preheat your brewers. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's one of the bigger things. And I was amazed at how, how well this actually uh, performed, you know, since it's a ceramic. <coughs> and uh, most, you know, most, most people would have preferred uh, a plastic brewer like the Aurea. Sure. You know, yeah. It's very fast. You have one too. Oh yeah, I got Aurea. Uh, those are very fast. Uh, it brews differently. It's it's the same or a little bit similar in speed, but it somehow the cup quality is is different from the the MK. I, I find the MK um, 
you know, I know you've been brewing it for a few days now. Yep. Um, my my with my recipe, I was using a, a two uh, two combo pour. Oh. So if you looked at the, um, if you looked at the yeah. April Patrick uh, Rolf, yeah, yeah, he has a thirty seventy pour for the April dripper. Yes, yep. What I did is simplify that easier math. Okay, fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty, and then you do it twice. So oh, let's say so, so, so fifty I, fifty circle pour, and the fifty yeah. center pour. Yeah. And then wait another what? Wait about 30 seconds after? Uh, no, you wait about, about a minute until it's fully, almost fully drained. So it's about okay. a minute 10, a minute 15, depending on your dose. Um, okay. Usually I do a 20 gram 320. So my division would be 80, 160, 240, 320. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'm going to make quick coffee right now. I'm going to do, I'm going to do 13 gram dose. Okay. I'm going to do 13 gram dose. So I'm going to go 50, 50. I'm going to take your recipe. Yeah, yeah. Use the flat bottom paper there. Yes, yes. I use that a lot too. Uh, or you can use, uh, I think Elika is using the Sibarist, I think. But those are quite expensive for, you know, for everyday use. Yes, but hey. Hey, by the way, so I am I am making coffee with, have you ever tried the California Geisha? Geisha from no. French? No. Okay. I, the girl in Santa amazing. Barbara. Wow. I And I thought Australia was growing their own coffee. Man, wow, I'm telling amazing. you, Cali and the California gashers are very unique. And then uh, I'm going to be using my fellow old Gen 2 right now. Yeah, how are those? How's the Gen 2? Oh, it's not bad. It's pretty good for the price. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of good comments about it. I mean, they're really fast. That is fast. It uh, comes with uh, anti-static technology already <clears throat> built in, so you don't have to do RDT either. Sure. Are oh, you making me want to brew a cup too? Okay. Hold on a second here. <laughs> oh, okay, so I mean, your Instagram handle is Gate or Alvin Geisha. Are you drinking? No, no, no. Al Chang eighty eight is my handle. Okay. Um, my friend uh, Jose from Abu uh, Abu Coffee in Panama. He uh, gave me the nickname. Ah, Senor Geisha, because of all the geishas that I uh, pretty much always have. Senor Geisha. So what is your favorite geisha right now? Uh, right now, it's still, um, origin-wise, it it's still Panama. Panama Geisha, okay. Yep. Panama Geisha, uh, there's a variety of good farms there. Uh, Esmeralda okay. is always top. Jansen, you know, Deborah, Abu. There's just a whole bunch of them. They're they're so they're just amazing what they're doing there. Hey, uh, what do you uh, how do you feel about the, all those fermentation, like ah, David does, Bermudez? I think I think they're getting too much. I'm I'm getting tired of. I mean, it's a uh, it's a trend that I hope will uh, end soon. Okay. And uh, I've been telling actually I, I I work with a lot of producers. I I know a lot of the producers, and I uh, I actually tell them you know like can we. Do less fermentation and uh, get get back to the more classic, you know, classic notes. Okay, so so, so what is the classic? So this uh, this tasting note is pretty much uh, very classic as get uh, jasmine, uh, lemon, cocoa, and cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon. Interesting. Okay, so you do what? Fifty fifty. <clears throat> yeah, fifty fifty. Wait about until everything is uh, almost drained. And then do the second uh, combo pour. Okay. I'm going to start with a 50 gram. And no need to bloom. The whole thing just goes in. Should I talk about the uh, differences in the dripper? Uh, sure, the... absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, while you're, while you're brewing. So, yep. Um, okay, so I'm going to show again. This is the prototype. No nipples. Yep. Messy drips. This thing was dripping everywhere, all, all over the server. So this was one of the first ones. I mean, it works. I still use it. Uh, I don't use it as much because it's not as fast. Okay. But this one works well with the wave filters. Okay. Um, this one came after that. So this was about um, maybe a few months after the prototype came out. 
So we've added the nipples on this, but the holes were only slightly bigger. Everything else was the same. You've got the uh, nice um, interior, but the holes were still pretty small. So you need to be careful with the grind setting on these. Sure, absolutely. And then this came out. This model is actually um, made when Elika was competing. Ah. So these are the same batches as Elika's. Um, so you've got everything already built in. You've got the nipples. You've got the uh, the dome inside. That's right, yeah, dome. Yep. The much larger holes mm -hmm. now. Okay, so this is actually what Elika competed with. And a lot of people, um, they were getting confused with, I guess, one of the uh, times that Elika mentioned that uh, his drippers were different from what was being produced. So let's clarify that. Um, all the drippers that was being produced while he was competing until today okay. is the same speed. So the flow rate is the same. So I'll, I can show you a side-by-side. -side. So this orange one is one of the newer ones. So you've got yep. the same holes. They are the same holes, yep. The only difference with this is, now, now you have the new one. It's the same as this. It's this bottom. You've got yep. less... You see that? You got less off the bottom. And that's yeah. it. I think that's just more for material mm -hmm. um, and more for weight savings uh, because these <coughs> things uh, do weigh quite a bit and they're made really well. So this is another new one. They're so beautiful. Uh, I know. They're, they're just so amazing. I mean, you can just stare at them. Okay, by the way, so it's about 2 minutes and 20 seconds for my brew time. That's about right. So this is the definitely has to be a lemon, cocoa. Yeah, it should be uh, the aroma should be very good, and uh, the sweetness should be quite high. And what I like about the recipe is the balance. So the balance and the consistency. Each brew you do is all you need to do is tweak your grind setting, tweak That's, your yep. Um, yep. your water temperature. And the way you set at your water temperature? Um, depends on the coffee. Um, most of my coffees are light roast uh, Scandinavian coffee. So um, I'm always hovering between 95, 96, 97. Um, sometimes I go to 99, depending on sure. how good the coffee was roasted, actually. It all depends on the coffee. Man, I mean, I like your recipe. 50-50 is a lot easier than 37. I need to talk to Patrick about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean that's uh, that's easier, easier to remember easy exactly thank you thank you i'm glad you like it and okay, you can always so, tweak the temperature you know oh yeah. so so this is like classic geisha from california very wow. classic very Amazing. soothing you know very clean wow. like tea okay here's the thing about the geisha right people say if you want a tea why don't you drink tea but something about the coffee tastes like tea. Yeah, that's why everybody loves Ethiopians to begin with. I know, yep. The people, and yep. that's where I fell in love as well. Uh, you know, Ethiopians, they were just so good. And okay, so, I mean, like so it sounds like to me, so you are definitely not a, a fermentation guy. So you <laughs> not, prefer not the, the, yeah, the classic. Yeah, and uh, but the lately, so uh, I've been drinking uh, this coffee 720, 720 hours of fermentation. Wow. Yeah, and then this one tastes like you know just out of this world. So and, you're getting balsamic. Uh... Uh, no, I mean like tastes like sometimes a Jolly Ranch, one of them. Oh, those kind. I see. Yeah, those yeah. kind. And then, uh, another one was like a um, uh, white miso. <laughs> Umami. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's again. It's like very unique. So, the koji, okay, so, the koji process. Uh, have you had koji process coffee? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yep. Yep. Koji process. Those tend to have a little bit of the green tea, um, umami. They're all inherent to it somehow. I okay. Was so, actually lucky enough to to have one of the first uh, koji processed uh, geishas from uh, Kapo, uh, Kapo Pavlovinen, uh, the Finland barista champion. Finland. And so yes, yes. 
How's the coffee scene in Hong Kong? Coffee scene here is actually quite advanced. Really? Um, we, I, I, I deem Hong Kong to be ahead of um, pretty much all the other Asian countries, I think. Okay. Uh, well, of course, we're behind Australia. Yeah. Um, but a lot of our, a lot of our um, influence comes from Melbourne, actually, from Australia. So that's how it started here. I think it started, uh, the really third wave started maybe around 2008, 2008, 2009. That's when, you know, you're, you're hearing single origins, pour overs. That's uh, right. But pretty much espresso at that time blends. Oh, uh, by the way, so what is your coffee setup behind uh, your, behind you? Yeah. Um, I have a VBM uh, machine okay. there. It's a super yeah. digital. So okay. it's got the uh, pre-infusion. That's right, BBM. Yep. Yeah, it's it's really good. I like that. I have the niche next to it. Okay. And um, I have my uh, other grinders on the other side of the bar. I, I, I'm lucky my wife uh, puts up with my <laughs> puts up with my hobby because I have nine feet of bar behind me. Uh, you know what? I mean, so I mean, this, this is all I have right here. <laughs> That's it. It's good enough. And then so, but, you know, at my work, you know, I turn my, because I have a small computer business, uh, oh. you know, Midtown, Tucson, you know, small office, but so my computer shop become, become, become yeah, like coffee. It's not a studio. Okay. More like yeah, a coffee yeah. desk. Oh, I, I, I would do that too. I'd set it up at, at the office as well. You know, I think everybody does that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I mean it is. So uh, let's go back to uh, MK. So. So what was the like response time like? So let's say Ilika said, hey, you know what? Can you make changes for me on the dripper? How oh, soon guys are make adjustments? Um, I think within a couple of weeks. Okay. Because they have everything, as you know, they, they do everything in-house. So as long as the uh, modifications are not uh, involving um, changing the whole mold. That's right. Yep. That's that's the hard part because changing the whole mold, they have to go from the front again, which means three right. D printing for maybe a day or two, and then casting a silicone mold from that, and then casting the actual mold from the silicone mold, and the, you know that just takes so so long. I think that's at least one week wow. that they have to sneak into their production. Um, but yeah, I mean, when incorporating the holes, the holes were actually the easiest. Because when they do that, it's when it just comes out of the mold when it's still soft before firing. So they, they drill the holes at that time. Um, so other, other than that, other changes like the, the thickness of that base, that, I think yeah. that's, that's fairly easy, I think. Um, they just did that recently. So it's now like this. Much lighter. By the way, so you went on sale this morning. Oh, it was gone so quickly. It, I was is it like it gone in night. like matter of, I think one design left, but it wasn't the most desirable design, but you know, they're still gone yeah, later yeah, on, yeah. but the most colors are gone in like, you know, matter of minutes. As soon as it goes up, it's gone. Somebody will snap it. I was watching it. I was uh, talking with a few friends who were online as well, and they were just, everybody's panicking. So uh, I, I did talk to uh, Magda immediately during the, the web shop sale um, and gave a few suggestions on uh, maybe, you know, putting it down immediately. If it's sold, then people don't have to keep scrolling and seeing it sold. I, I, but uh, I think they'll try to incorporate that later on. I mean, that's the kind of like downside of like smaller shop, right? Yes, yes. I mean, it's, uh, you can't expect them to be uh, a factory. They, they're not. They're a boutique shop. And, uh, you know, everything is handmade. I know. And, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you get a unique product. Each item is unique. I mean, the cups, they're all going to be unique to your, yep. to your own cup. So you can have maybe 10 of these and 10 of them will look different. Exactly. Yeah, slightly variant. There's, yeah, there are going to be some variance in the patterns and variance in a little bit of the, you know, it's just the charm of the handmade. And I, I like that a lot. In, in oh, okay, so, so I mean, sometimes, I'm, uh, I'm, unfortunately, not everybody can, not to pull to buy one, but they don't have 
you know, that couldn't get one, right? Yeah, yeah. So is there any close to some uh, some drippers out there close to something like this? I think the closest, if you would say, a closer version of this would be a uh, a Kalita. Kalita, okay. But it's not gonna flow as fast. I know. So uh, maybe maybe the Tsubame, you know, either the copper or the. Um, yep. I, I have one. Um, maybe this one. Oh. But you see, this only has three holes. I know, holes not big enough. Yep. But you can always drill it. It's metal. That's true. You can always so, drill it. You're right. Yeah, you can drill. It's an expensive dripper to try to mess around with. But. Exactly. I know. I mean, I mean, that's why I've been playing with the Oreo. <clears throat> I mean, that's pretty fast. Yes. And also... The Oreo is nice and fast. <clears throat> it's a little different in the cup quality. I, uh, I feel the Oreo doesn't give us much... Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just different. It's a good dripper. It won worlds. So that speaks for itself too. Um, it's a, it's an amazing fast dripper as well, but it just it's a different cup quality. So I guess it also needs to match the coffee that you're you're brewing. You know what I mean? That's the thing about the dripper, isn't it? Because you gotta match with the what yeah. kind of coffee you are. So people are watching us right now. Okay, I mean sometimes it is it is. It is or it isn't a dripper. You need to understand your coffee. Yes. And then you got to match that to what kind of dripper you want to try. So it's actually a matter of um, understanding extraction. You could, yep. And, and understanding the coffee that you have and what do you want to get out of that coffee? How to get out, how to get the flavors out. So a lot of people that are asking for recipes and whatnot, it, it actually... It's kind of useless because you know your equipment is different from my equipment. Your taste preference is different from my taste preference. You know, I mean, just that alone is already a big difference. But okay, but you and I both know if we we, we drink good coffee, we know that's good. <laughs> okay, that's true. Okay, yes. Yeah, so sometimes the the beauty is to be eyes of the holder, but if you saw something beautiful, something tasty, you know what? That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, nowadays with water being such an important <coughs> part, you know, everybody's making their own brew water as well. You know um, what? That's the one thing I'm going to be getting into uh, sometime next week. Water. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so not only we have to worry about uh, the brewer's design, right? The, what kind of brewers we want to pick? And then what kind of coffee? And let's not forget the paper as well, right? We got yes, kind of yes. The paper filters are often overlooked. Yep, and then, and also what kind of water quality. Yes. So, do you have any idea how much time to develop, like, competition recipes? Oh, I, I've never actually, I, the only time I've competed is during the AeroPress competition. Okay. Um, so, that's a totally, I think that's a totally different way of competing. It's more fun, yep. um, less stressful. <coughs> Um, but I think it, it incorporates the same things. You know, you have to nail down your water. You have to yep. nail down your grinder and the grind size as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's not forget what kind of grinder yeah. too. Exactly. And and yet you don't have the coffee yet. You know, with the AeroPress, you still don't know what the coffee is until a week before competition maybe. Then you get the practice coffee. Uh, but I mean so that's if, why, like I mean that's another reason, like Brewers Cup are so competitive, right? Because Brewers Cup, you are going to bring everything. Yes, yes, exactly. And with the Brewers Cup, actually, this year's Brewers Cup, actually, with the, um, you know, some competitors had some lost luggage problems, and that oh, was sure. that was a shame, yeah. And uh, I, I think that's quite hard. You know, you're practicing with a coffee, and then suddenly your coffee doesn't arrive, and then that's. Uh, that's what happened to Sherry, you know, the winner. Wow. No, nobody knows, actually. <laughs> so, by the, so, by the way, so let's talk about your grinder. I, I, I never used a Kinu before. Is that, I mean, is that compared to what, Comandante or what? Um, it actually came after Comandante. Actually, the company has been around almost 30 years now. Okay. So, it's an old company. The, the, the parent company is a very old company. They're making uh, OEM products for other companies. Okay. 
Um, uh, Comandante, you know, is uh, very popular, but Kino know, came yeah. out with their own line. Let me just grab one. Yeah, oh, grab two. So they came out with this one first, which is the well, it's it's different from the what original one because I have a three D printed base here. Okay. And a popcorn cover, but yes. this is what came out in twenty sixteen. So you can see the logo is different. Oh wow, twenty sixteen. Okay. Yeah, so this still works well. Really, <coughs> you know, it's it's built to last these things, and uh, I mean, it's over a kilo. And I think James Hoffman um, mm -hmm. did a great review on this. It's uh, it's uh, made for a lot of people say you know it's espresso burn. But actually, the espresso burr or whatever burr you want to say, the okay. standard burr, I call it, it's it's good for both filter and espresso. So, uh, you know, with that grinder, you can you can do both. And I use this for both um, before, when, before I got my niche. That's so I was right. grinding. Yeah, yeah. You had to grind manually for espresso. He, uh, terrible. No. Uh, not, not I, don't, I don't want to dial in an espresso nope. three times on a hand grinder. No way. Well, you know what? But I mean, as you know, lately it's all about the bird design too. Oh my goodness! Yeah, lately the actually, you know, people nowadays are are so lucky. You know, can you imagine back then when uh, when I started really seriously getting into coffee? It's maybe um, twenty thirteen. That's when I'm seriously going into uh -huh. a single origin, uh, lighter roast. So I was drinking a lot from Pacific Northwest of the U.S. Okay. Heart Roasters, you know, those guys. Yes. Um, because nothing here in Hong Kong had, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much medium to medium dark at that mm -hmm. time. And, uh, you know, influence here for roasting was basically from Taiwan. Okay. So, yeah, you know, Taiwan, the influence was from Japan. <laughs> I know, they are pretty dark over there. So, yeah, that's pretty dark. Uh, it's, oh, yeah. it's definitely darker than uh, medium. So... At that time, I started looking for lighter and lighter roasts, and then that led me to a Nordic coffees. That was back in 2014. Wow. And I've been drinking Nordic coffees since then, and I think my palate is, is tuned to that. So I talked with a few roasters, like um, the one in Japan called Apollon's Gold. Okay. Uh, we talk often. He knows my palate is uh, quite close to what he wants to accomplish with his roast, so... <laughs> It's it's good to work. I mean, I like doing this. You know, it's I don't earn anything from it, but it's more the fun, connecting with people, connecting with producers, connecting with um, makers, uh, connecting with uh, equipment makers as well. I mean, I do sell these, uh, but I I try to be as honest on my page. Uh, I don't feature anything that I wouldn't use myself on, on my Instagram. Exactly. And I, and I think that's what people are getting confused now with too many people pushing, you know, this grinder, that kettle, that scale. And you know what? I mean, it's right now because I've been doing for about three years now. Okay. Making yeah. videos and checking things out. And then, I mean, lately I'm talking about last 12 months. Okay. Uh -huh. Went fast. Yeah, they got so many different grinder. The D, kind of like DF sixty four, they changed the landscape of grinder yes. market. So sixty four millimeter, the flat bird, the X, oh SSP is responsible for a lot of confusion. Yes. SSP SSP is responsible for a lot of these flat burr oh, yeah. aftermarket uh, burrs. and you they're know, doing I'm, a good job, I think, and uh, I know. that's giving a lot of good option. You know, the old Gen one wasn't really grinding fine enough. So mm -hmm. that was a good option then. You know what? You know, I have to leave it to my fellow Korean friends, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, that's my hometown. You know, I'm born and raised in Seoul, okay? Yes. Uh, when I was in Korea, when I was in high school, I mean, I went, you know, I was in high school in Korea. There's no coffee shop way back when. We are talking in 80s. There's no coffee shops. Mm -hmm. But now, if you go to Korea right now, it seems like every corner has coffee shops there. Yeah, yeah, and April just opened a new one there. I know, because I saw that Patrick opened up in Seoul, you know. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. I mean, The rent uh, over I... there are fortune, okay? Wow. It's, not, it's not cheap, so, yeah. And then, so I've been playing with the April. April is, have you played with the April Dripper yet? 
Yeah, yeah, I have, I have uh, an April dripper, but the the only recipe that seems to really work well is his recipe. I know. Yep. So I've I've tried all ways of doing it, but it always will end up clogging. And you can't grind the you, you can't grind coarser because the coarser you go, the less flavors you come out with. Yep. Uh, so, th but that's the only way to unclog. So the only way is really is his recipe, which you know I believe he did a lot of research on that. I think that's smart, though. You know, his way or highway, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I true, think that's true. The... Well, you don't get that with this one. This one you can actually brew um, however you want to. You can do pulses. You can do uh, center pour, circular pour. I, I think, you know, pretty much up to, uh, you know, the owner, uh, how they want to use it. Uh, so, so what, is, I guess, is it your MK's your favorite dripper now? Um, it's one of my, it's one of my favorite drippers, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. I have a lot of drippers and, uh, my favorite conical is actually a Kono. Oh. Yeah. So it's oh. not a Hario. I actually, I have several Harios, but I don't, I don't use them. I haven't used them since 2012, 2014. Really? Kono? It's just, yeah. Okay. Kono is, um, i show you. Yeah. Yeah, they're all hiding in the cabinet. Luckily for me, I have a lot of space. Um, so this is one of their uh, drippers. They look like V60, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually a long history about this. They came out with the original design for Kono back in the early 70s. Okay. And uh, if you look into the history, um, you will see that actually the V60 um, modified this dripper to ah. have the yeah to have the ribs go up and in swirling pattern and with a larger exit hole no kidding but with this if you haven't tried this I, I i suggest you try one it's really really very good too okay i'm gonna try that yeah definitely i'm gonna i'm gonna but try. you need to let the dripper do the work don't yep. don't do what you do with the v60 it, it doesn't work with this dripper it's uh you like to be, uh, this dripper likes to be, you know, with gentle pores. Yeah, you can grind fine, but you have to be gentle with it and use the right papers. I use Abaca filters. Okay. So you can use the, the faster type of filter so that there's less chances of clogging. Because the design is, um, it's like half, okay, the ribs are only on the bottom third. Okay. So up here is full contact with the filter. So you have um, no bypass up here in this zone. And then you only oh, have you. a little bit partial bypass on the bottom. Interesting. So yeah, that's one of the features of the the, the Kono dripper. Kono. And it's so it, I mean, it's getting made? popular again. Is that Japanese company or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a Japanese co company. It's uh, Kono Siphon. Actually, they okay. made Siphon. Uh, they're similar to Harrier. You know, they make the labware, the glassware. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they 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 came out around the same time, but. These guys actually came up with this first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and, uh, so what is your next project for you? Next project? Uh, it's a lot of ongoing projects. Uh, working with the new versions of this with the MK. Um, some other stuff, the pitcher. Okay. There's a new server uh, that's coming out as well. Um, and a few other stuff. Um, I'm actually, I'm collaborating with a lot of brands. Uh, Bean Bros is uh, one of the, the coffee subscriptions that I work with. Uh, they're out from Denmark. Okay. So they're, they're really good. Um, you know, we have nice subscription coffees there. Um, I work with uh, Old Lanterns. Okay. I'm actually their ambassador for Kono. So that's why I, I have a lot of these. Okay. You know, you better send me one, okay? Sure, sure. Yeah. I I'll pay for the shipping. All right. I pay for the shipping. <laughs> I'll, do that. I'll send you some. Because the shipping is the killer, isn't it? Because uh, I, know. I mean, I mean, even though I mean, so this dripper is about about what 80, 80 US dollars, seventy uh, around, yeah. But the problem the sh coming from Denmark, so the shipping, so you got to add shipping, so you're looking at over a hundred dollars per dripper. That's I mean, right. That's right. I mean, for the most goodness, most of us, it is a lot of money for just a dripper. But, but the flip side is, I mean, if you are into like coffee hobbyists like us, I mean, dropping hundred dollars is like it's not a big deal. 
Yeah, you know? it's not a big deal, especially if you know it works well. Yeah, that's I mean, the problem. I mean, the, the main thing is like when you're dropping, say, when this came out, this was so, so expensive at that time. It, I think it still is. And it took me a while to actually get myself to buy it. Sure, yeah, to try to because, justify. Exactly. You need to justify, you know, is it really worth it or is it just look pretty? Yeah, you know now, what? It pretty matters. Not, it, it, was, it was working well, but now it's in my drawer. <laughs> because you find something better. I mean, that thing exactly. about technology, right? Just like technology, you know? It, it's, it, you just keep moving forward, and then you, <coughs> you sometimes you, you find something that's uh, better, or maybe it just matches your coffee and taste <coughs> at that time more. You know, even uh, grinders now. I mean, you have so many, just the easy presso is, uh, I don't even know what models they have. They have like, what, 20? I, you know, I have no clue because I'm even, I mean, I have a uh, quite a few DF64. I got, so I have a uh, six, I have a uh, 64 HU burst, MP burst, Caspers, Gorilla gear. Oh, I have, I have a four separate grinder with four different burst sets. <laughs> okay. And then let's not forget, I got niche grinder. Yeah. And I got EK43. Yes. And then you still have that old. Yeah, I got the oat. So, okay, so you, you get to, you are going down to this rabbit hole, okay? That really, really deep there. Yeah, and, yeah, I understand. I, I totally get it. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm quite lucky. People are probably wondering, you know, I couldn't buy one of these. Why does he have so many? You know, I mean, people I, want uh, to know that too, you, you know? And, but, and I feel I feel bad, you know. But uh, you know, the, the fact is, I, I'm working with the uh, with the development of these strippers with MK. So I do get the um, I do get the priority, uh, you know, when when they come up with a modification or something. Um, but I think this this is the last. Um, I mean, it's working really well already. You know, the new ones, um, the one that you have is is the new one. So that one is uh, working really really well now. And this. And so I think but I mean, okay, so as like competitor, right? As like Brewers Cup competitor. So I bet you at some point he's going to change something else to match uh, his coffee, right? Yeah. So, I mean, where it's end, right? So where is end to, it's got to be, I wonder, is there such thing as a perfect dripper? Uh, I don't think perfect. so. It, it's it's only perfect for that person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. Perfect. Or, or maybe that timing. You know, like right yep. now with um, with Sherry taking the gold in the brewer. So you've got the Oreo drippers uh, flooding the market. Man, you can't even get one. You you can't. Okay. I, I I got a few. I'm lucky. I'm working with Oreo as well. I, I, okay, you know, so I'm, this is. This is what I like about this industry is um, the friendship, the connections that I, uh, I've forged. Uh, so I have really close friendships with a lot of key people in the industry. And I, it's, it's something that you can't, uh, it's, it's different in coffee. You know what? You don't I get mean, that in I'm, other industries. Because I mean, you're right, because coffee industry is huge, right? They are multi, multi-billion dollar business. But yeah. coffee, the specialty coffee communities are tiny. Yes. I bet you you name every single one of them the key players, you know, uh, uh, because the Oreo, I mean, they are pretty smart outfitter, you know. Yeah. And the MK. I mean, most line. of these, yeah, most of these people, they're not big. They're not big factory. I mean, of course, you have people like Hario, Kalita, sure. yeah. you know, they're the big players, right? But um, they, they're not going to go change their dripper for you. So you're gonna to have to make it work for your that's right, yep. Your performance for your coffee, right? But something like MK, and that's one thing that I think Alika really appreciated a lot is uh, the way that MK is open. Um, they're open to suggestions. They're open to um, better ways that they can improve something, and that's that, that speaks highly of the company. You know that they care. They care about the people. So they're not just pushing, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, buy my uh, beautiful dripper. Oh, now it's second place. You know, I mean, it's it's good for the reputation of the brand. But, um, you know, the dripper has to perform. Right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's not just yeah. going to sit. I mean, most of, most of the time, this guy is up there on display. 
because it's so pretty. You know, I, I just put it up on a, on a shelf. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it, you have to be able to use it to what you like. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've loved the AeroPress a lot. I, I mean, there's so many drippers that I like, but sometimes you just focus on a few. Um, for now, my focus is mainly on the MK, on the Kono, yeah. um, the Aurea. You know what? And I mean, that's pretty that's, much it. That's exactly what you know, I've been telling my viewers. Stick with one or two. Okay. Yeah. 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 You don't need them all. Two. You don't need them all. No, nope, and they're just perfected, you know. Spend time with it. Come up the coffee you want. Okay, play with the grind size, water temperature, you know. Get, get the think, coffee. Yeah, I think the most important is their, they have to buy the coffee, a good coffee yep. from a good roaster. That's that's one of the most important. They have to buy a good grinder. That, yep, grinder is key. You know, I mean, the grinder is key. If you can't grind good enough, then your coffee is not going to... Yep. You're not going to extract the, the, the goodness out of it and the water. It's just these three things, actually. Yep. Hey, so by the way, so, so who is your favorite Norik uh, coffee roaster right now? Who is your top Whoa, three? Oh, that is tough. Huh? I mean, top I have three. a few favorites. Okay. Um, Who's that? You have Coffee Collective. You have La Cabra, Tim Wendelbo. Ah, okay, Tim, okay. Um, you know, the, the, the usual, the big ones, you know, Damateo. Morgan from Sweden. They're, they're, they're just, <coughs> everybody has their own, because most of them are now all, um, offering coffees that are direct relationship with the farmers. So sometimes their offering is, is the same thing year after year, you know, like Tim Wendable, it just kind of repeats, right? But the harvest is different. Um, certain uh, roasters are doing this now. So you just kind of go and grab which one you like. Uh, they're all pretty good. Um, I mean, even the Nordic roasters now, they're roasting a little bit more developed. Uh, I, I think you've probably seen that. Yep. Um, they're not as uh, light as before, and most of them are actually even doing naturals, um, fermentation, yep. coffees. Yep. You know, before it was only natural. Natural was actually very rare back then. It was mostly washed. Uh, but now they, you know, they open up to the market, to the wider market. <coughs> Man, yeah, because I mean, you know, right? I mean, coffee is your hobby. Now is a great time to be a coffee hobbyist. Oh yeah, yeah. COVID with COVID, I think it it actually, um, you know, you you multiply the amount of people buying online, buying equipment, you know, even espresso machines because you're stuck at home. You're so bored. Yep. And uh, I think uh, the last two years was really a boom for the market for the industry. Oh yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <coughs> tell me about it. That that is that is absolutely true. Yeah. And anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us this Thanks evening for having me. and morning for you. And uh, uh, let's talk some more, okay, down the road. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Arvin. Okay. Have a great day. Thank Big you. shout out to Arvin from Hong Kong. It was a lot of fun, folks. A lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great evening, and see you guys next time.